Investing can get so complicated and most people doing it lose money or they do a lot worse than they thought they would. And believe me, when I started, I made all of the mistakes and I knew none of this. So to finally stop people losing money investing, I've put together three of the most important steps that I think you need to know. And I think you can end up with a very good chance of never losing money investing. Let's start from the top. The first step is all about time. It's probably one of the most powerful weapons we have as investors. It's like when you get the AC-130 playing Call of Duty because you've got a massive kill streak. Once you get that, nothing can stop you. You see, with investing, the longer you invest, the much better chance you have of making money because two amazing things happen for you. Firstly, the magic of compound interest starts to work and there's no better example of this than the GOAT himself, Warren Buffett. Take a look at how over his lifetime, his wealth has just gone to the moon. He went from his first million dollars by the time he was 30 to his first billion just 25 years later in his 50s. And then if that wasn't enough, he took that 1 billion and turned it into 10 just a decade later. And the rest speaks for itself. And sure, there were lots of good investments during that time and plenty of mistakes too. But the key thing was the amount of time he spent investing, letting his money grow and compound year after year and not trying to time the market. But more on that part a bit later. Now, I know you might be thinking that there's no way you can compare the average person to Warren Buffett and we don't have millions to invest. But let me show you how compound interest can work for you and also show you how the amount of time invested makes a huge difference to those returns, even if you get unlucky. Let me explain. So look, there's no way of knowing how much money you'll make investing in the future. We don't know if the next 10, 20 or 30 years will be as good as the last. And there are no guarantees at all when it comes to the stock market. But one thing that investing for a long amount of time can do for us is amazing. Now just have a look at this. I've got three charts to show you that explain why long-term investing is almost like a cheat code in real life. So this first one is showing us 10 year rolling returns from all the way back in 1926 up until present day in the S&P 500. Basically, if you pick any point on the chart, that is what you would have got on average per year for the last 10 years before that point. For example, the best 10 year period would have been up until the end of 1959 with an average yearly return of 21.4% a year. For some perspective, that's almost double the really long term average of the stock market. You'd be one lucky guy and in gaming terms, this would be like getting a 1080 no scope for the winning kill. I'm sorry if you've got no idea what it is, but it's really lucky. Anyway, on the flip side, if you weren't so lucky, you can see that there have been a couple of periods when the returns were really bad. The worst 10 year period ended in 1939 with an average loss per year of 5%. So that's every single year losing money. Now I'm not sure even the most dedicated investor could stick with that, but bear in mind that was probably one of the worst periods in US history. I mean, it wasn't called the Great Depression for no reason. You might also see another bad period here as well. This was from the global financial crash, another 10 years worth of negative returns, and we haven't even spoken about inflation yet. In gaming terms, you'd feel like you were teabagged. I probably won't explain that one in too much detail. You can Google it if you really want. Sorry, mum. Anyway, put 10 years away, and now let's look at 20 year returns. The same rules apply. You can pick any point in this graph and that is the average rate of return that you would have got each year as an investor. One thing you'll notice now is that there's no period where you would have actually lost money at least. So there's no negative numbers. But yes, you can still get pretty unlucky as well. And there is a huge difference between the good times and the bad times. For example, if you ended your returns in 1949 when the World War II ended, you'd be only getting a 2% return each year. That would be some really bad luck, but then there's not much you can do after having a Great Depression and the World War to deal with. On the flip side though, check out some of the rest of the chart. Mostly you'd be doing pretty well. And in fact, almost 90% of the time, you'd be getting annual returns of 7% or more. Just for some perspective, 7% return per year, if you manage to invest £10,000 or $10,000 in one go for 20 years, turns that money into 38,000 696. Now that's a 286% return over that period. Not bad at all, but can we do any better if we do this investing thing for a much longer time? Behold the final chart, the ultimate boss for investors. This is now a chart showing 30 year rolling returns. Pause for a second and look at what you're seeing now and hopefully you're noticing a couple of major changes from the last two. Firstly, again, there are no negative numbers, so we're always making money. And then secondly, Look how much better even the worst 30 year period was compared to the last charts. Even if you did have the worst possible luck, the world conspired against you and all of your teammates playing online sucked, 
you still make really good returns. In fact, listen to this. The worst 30 year period for you as an investor over the last 100 years still made you 7.8% a year. Now that's a total return during that period of 850%. Most people with average luck doing a 30 year investing period are getting much closer to 9 and 10% meaning that their returns were even better. And just for fun, if you were Mr. Lucky, the best period gets you 14.8% a year ending in 1968. And 14.8% per year for 30 years turns a £10,000 or a $10,000 investment into 628,000, giving you a total return of more than 6,000%. Not bad if you can get it. So that's the first cheat code to letting us never lose as investors. What about point number two? So you need to invest for the long term, but how do you get started? Do you save all of your money up and then throw it all in, close your eyes and just hope for the best? Do you wait for Jim Cramer to tell you that everything's going to be okay? Or maybe you wait until your gut tells you to do it. All of these are probably not great ways to decide whether you want to invest or not, but there is one way that's proven itself over the long run to help investors to never lose. And that is dollar cost averaging. And yes, if you really hate that phrase and you're from the UK, you can use pound cost averaging, but that's really not the important point. All that matters is what it means. Investing into the stock market on a regular basis with the same amount of money, no matter what happens. So when I say dollar cost average, I mean investing each month, when you get paid or every two weeks, whatever works for you. And rather than just tell you this is what you should do, let me show you how through history, this has been one of the best strategies to use. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna compare an investor who invests hundred pounds or hundred dollars every month for 40 years, and then compare that to someone with perfect market timing. Someone who can time the market and only makes his buys at the lowest point in the market. In fact, he saves up his £100 or $100 each month until the bottom hits, and then he invests it all at once. So this person only invests at the bottom between new market all-time highs. To make it even harder, you could be dropped in at any point in history between 1920 and 1979. Now, after me telling you this, you might think that it's a slam dunk. You've put a level one noob against a prestige master, so surely the only winner is the person with the perfect market timing. Well, here's how it really turned out. If we use the example ending in 2018, yes, the person with perfect market timing does win, but only just. And it was mainly due to the fact that they saved up a huge amount of cash to invest right at the bottom of the global financial crash. Now, as you can see here, this green section shows the cash pile built up by our Mr. Perfect, and he gets to invest right at the bottom here. Now, what if I told you that if we test this idea across the last 100 years, our Mr. Perfect and Mr. Lucky does not actually come out on top most of the time, even with all of his godlike ability. In fact, here's something you need to see. From 1920 to 2020, across any 40 year period, being a regular investor who just invests every month without even looking and not caring about the price actually beats Mr. Perfect 70% of the time. You've got no knowledge, no skill, yet you can still beat someone who knows when the stock market will be at its absolute lowest point every time. It's like you're sat there playing your console as a kid with your friend's house and you still beat them even though they've given you the worst unofficial controller that their mum managed to get them from Argos. Imagine that then. No, not the Mad Cat's controller. The fact that a strategy of just investing every single month beats someone with perfect market timing. And just before we go to the next section, let me drop in a final little nugget of information for you which really seals the deal. If Mr. Perfect misses the bottom of the market and gets his timing wrong by just two months, this lowers his chances of beating you from 30% to just 3%. You win 97% of the time by just investing no matter what. So in the words of the author that I referenced these charts from, as it says on the front of his book, he wrote, just keep buying. Just before we head into the final point, if you are enjoying the video, please do drop me a like on the video and also hit subscribe if you aren't already. Loads of people watch my videos, they don't subscribe, it's free to do and it means you'll never lose money in the stock market for the next 30 years. Probably not, but come back to this video in 2053 and we can see. So we know we need to invest for the long term and we should try and invest as regularly as possible and not time the market. But what do we buy and what do we invest in? Everything I've shown so far has all just talked about the S&P 500, which is just a list of the biggest stocks in the US that lots of us like to use as a benchmark. Lots of investors like to compare their own performance to the S&P 500 because it's really difficult to beat in the long run. Many people really like to pick stocks and try to find the next Tesla, the next Google or the next Amazon, 
but the truth is that it's extremely hard to find and very rare to actually find those winners. In fact, most companies end up bankrupt or maybe even bought by another one. Very few ever stay on top forever and there's no way of knowing what the biggest and best companies are going to be in the next 20 years. Here's a fun fact for you. In a research paper from 2018 called Do Stocks Outperform Treasury Bills, the author found some incredible data. For example, he found that between 1926 and 2015, all of the $32 trillion of wealth generated in the US stock market was created by just 1,000 companies. That number of companies was only 4% of the total number of all companies that had existed in the US stock market. And then even more interesting from a follow-up paper, now looking at non-US markets, he found that 60% of all stocks failed to deliver returns more than US T-bills. So in other words, just basic bonds. And less than 1% of companies created all the wealth between 1990 and 2018. Now flip this back to you as an investor. How are you going to be able to find the 1-4% to of stocks that actually are worth investing in? Here's where I'd suggest that you don't even need to bother. Instead, there's a simple and boring way to invest that guarantees you'll get the returns of the market. You'll get your slice of whatever wealth is created between now and however long you invest. And that way of investing is just buying everything. You don't pick and choose, you let the market take care of itself, and in the process, you'll actually end up beating the vast majority of people out there. It sounds so simple and it sounds so easy, yet I still think most people will ignore this and continue to try and think they're somehow Warren Buffett. The trick is to buy index funds, which might include buying something like the S&P 500 as a whole. And funny enough, Warren Buffett himself has said that most investors should have been doing this, and he's been saying this for years and years and years. You can buy index funds from pretty much any investment app or platform, some of which I have in the description below for UK investors. Personally, I choose to buy the whole world, so I invest in every stock that exists out there, and this means that whenever the market does well, I also do well. If we go back to those charts at the beginning, I'll be able to get my slice of those returns in the long run, whatever they might be. And along the way, I also know that this is a really cheap way to invest because I don't have to worry about any high fees from expensive money managers who think they know better. It truly is a set and forget style of investment that when you combine it with a long time period from step one and the regular investment schedule from step two, you get the holy trinity of investing. You get to feel like Thanos with a glove complete with all of the infinity stones and by following through with this, there's almost no way that you can lose money investing. This is your future. It's my destiny. Now, on that final point, one of the hardest decisions is trying to work out what index fund you might want to invest in because there's literally hundreds to choose from. So this next video could be very useful if you've not seen it before, where I look at whether you should invest in the S&P 500 or choose the whole world. You might be surprised with what I have to say on that one. Anyway, until next time, happy investing. Mission failed. We'll get them next time.